Hello everybody and welcome back to the next chapter of A Call from the Stars, A Call to Arms. Chapter 11 Point of View Master Sergeant Sin After the incident that happened where we found out that our hardware had been basically hacked by our supposed friends, I decided I needed some time off. Of course, it was granted when they found out that I had been in a personal relationship with one of our former friends. Of course, a lot of people didn't want me around. I got a lot of things thrown at me and, boy, a lot of insults, too. A lot of new ones, too. I, I've never actually been cursed at in so many different languages. But, as it turns out, it was a fairly quick fix. Our technicians went in and pretty much just ripped out all the alien tech and reset it with their own. Of course, a full computer wipe was required for that, but hey, what can you do? It is what it is. That phrase has never gone away since I was young. Still, it's nice to be out in space for a while. This artificial gravity is not nearly as strong as Earth, so got to work out a lot during the day, but hey. It eats up my time for a ground pounder like myself. Although, things got very, very interesting when all of a sudden I heard, General Quarters, General Quarters. I knew what that meant, so immediately I went to get my armor on. Because, hey, if the ship's going to get hit, then I might as well be in a suit, right? Well, I got in my suit, and being the senior NCO, non-commissioned officer... I went up to the bridge to see what the hell was going on. By the time I got there, the whole place was going nuts. Everybody was wondering what the hell was going on. I got a quick one, two, three brief about what the heck was going on. And they said two different groups of enemy ships had jumped into our space. And yet they paid zero attention to us. We were a simple patrol flotilla. One destroyer and two frigates. It really wasn't much. They outnumbered us, of course, but uh, we already knew what their firepower was. We, but we never actually fully tested ours. So, of course, everybody had a pucker factor of about 9,000 at that point. Then we saw something very strange. The small group behind the larger group of alien ships fired at their friends we actually just all went silent across the bridge except for the occasional what the hell it was very very strange at seeing this the captain started barking orders which was immediately relayed down to everyone else they started putting out a message which roughly came out to you are trespassing on human territory Leave or power down. You will not have a third option. And we sent that out. Without skipping a beat, as soon as that signal hit that first group, they immediately made a 98 degree turn and about 6 degrees up and they came right towards us. Immediately, we heard all our weapons control officers tell the turrets to get ready to fire and everyone got ready then something very strange happened just about as they were entering our kill zone we got a, a message from them but it wasn't in the enemy language it was in a different language and it took our translators a good minute to actually figure out what they were saying and what they said shocked everyone. These, whatever they were, were begging for help. Absolutely screaming, help us. They kept screaming, they're a peaceful race that managed to escape. Help us, please help us. We are full of women and children, please help us. And as you know... We're human. We don't ignore distress calls, but we still had our weapons locked onto them. 
the word went out to our three ships that they are not to fire until fired upon, but they are to lock onto every single ship. Every single one of the potential enemy ships, because we didn't know who was friendly and who was not. And they were all, at that point, within our weapons envelope. For those who have not learned their physics yet, firing one of our rail guns is still a projectile. It still takes time for it to reach its target. We could have fired missiles and torpedoes at that sucker the moment they showed up and they still tracked their target. But the rail guns, given enough time between launch and strike, you can dodge that sucker. They're completely unguided. However, as close as they were, it wouldn't have mattered at that point. To see which ones would be friendly, the message went out for all ships to power down weapons. And then, to, as they did, only the front group powered down any weapons they might have had turned on. And the moment after that, they were told to power down their engines. Again, the front group did. The second one did not. That second group came up and immediately started firing at the first group. That would have been one mistake. But the big mistake they truly made, they fired at us. One of the energy weapons actually glanced right off the hull. Apparently, it was too far away to get enough of it to concentrate enough to penetrate our hull. And without skipping a beat, the captain yelled, Shoot that motherfucker! And that was the end of that ship. Every single one of our guns fired into it. And the rest of that second group began to take evasive action and then fired at us as well. The second group did not last long. Only a small ship that was towards the rear of their formation was able to limp away. I could have swore that they got a death kill with that last shot, but apparently they just glanced it, and it jumped out of the system. When we finally got a hold of the aliens on the first one, we received one hell of a shock. As we saw on the monitors, these aliens look very close to human so much so that we were actually put back it was crazy as it turned out there was roughly anywhere from 25,000 to 30,000 refugees on those ships all crammed in like sardines on those ships as they seemed to be running away from our soon to be enemy well we are definitely, definitely not letting these folks get slaughtered. As it turns out, their transmission was 100% correct. It was full of women and children, a few old folks, but not many. Any males who were of military age were seriously messed up. They were immediately given sanctuary. And we led them straight to the closest military base as soon as we cleared it with the higher-ups. However, it didn't take much convincing to get that to happen. Once on a military base, we finally got a full-on good look at them. And boy, they're strange. At least we thought they were at first. We wouldn't go at them without either my full suit or one of our full hazmat suits. We didn't know what type of bacteria, viruses, or God knows what type of pathogens they might have, so best to take all precautions, of course. When I walked up to one, of course, my suit makes me a little taller, but these things are small. They're little lean things. I, I don't know how else to explain it. Well, let me try at least. Uh, they all, male and female, all stood right around five foot seven five foot six around that point at least the top of their head the weird thing is they had a kind of horn structure on the front of their head which kind of looked like a crown at first or a tiara type thing and then you realize it was actually horns and we're like okay that's weird the color of the skin varied from a kind of almost orange to a deep deep crimson red 
but it was designed, had this strange design of very, very short brown fur. And we found out later that that fur, once cleaned up, is exceptionally soft to the touch. I mean, you think rabbit fur is soft. It ain't got nothing on these guys. But we wouldn't find that out till later. Their eyes, well, for lack of a better term, they look almost bovine with this strange wide pupil, which as we found out gave them one hell of a sense of perception of what's around them. But one of the weirdest things was we couldn't tell the boys from the girls, the males from the females. They're so limited on dimorphism, at least to human standards, we couldn't tell. It wasn't until we actually got them on the base and had them clean up that we realized, um, yeah, there's different parts down there. Which made things a whole lot easier. We gave the males more, obviously, male human clothing and the females more feminine clothing, so at least we could tell them apart. It was actually a little weird. The kicker is, when we finally realized that they were not going to get us sick or anything like that, I was one on the security detail when we were actually able to show ourselves to them. And boy, did that get interesting. We didn't understand their biology fully at that point. We do understand it now. But the moment that a bunch of us raised our visors and the contingent of politicians and medical staff pulled off their coverings, something happened to them. It raised the pheromone levels in that room to a degree that the sensors actually started going off, saying there's trouble, something's wrong. We come to find out that these, this species, when it comes to our genetics, they are immediately drawn to us in a, shall we say, intimate matter? It actually was funny at first. The amount of jokes that came out on that one was absolutely crazy. However, when I told my men that if they took advantage of this, I would personally chuck them out of an airlock, they thought I was joking until I grabbed one of them by the throat and lifted him up. He knew I wasn't joking. Of course, we had to make sure that the rest of the staff wouldn't take advantage of this either. Well, aside from that, we found out, yep, they have the same amount of digits on their hands. They're very close to what we are as far as physically wise, except for being small, you know, a little bit leaner, a lot leaner, actually. It's almost impossible to find one that has any girth on it, except for uh, females that have had a bunch of kids. Oddly enough, it's they keep their so-called baby weight, at least in the um, more feminine areas. And which is why I ended up cold cocking one of my subordinates. He got a little handsy. Regardless, one of the main issues we had was actually getting them back to human society and actually getting them integrated. We knew there would be an issue with the moment people found out that they had this um, <clears throat> issue. But the fact of the matter is, is aside from that, they integrated just fine. They learned English faster than we ever thought possible. Although we still had a problem speaking their language. Mainly because, seriously, are we the only species in the universe without a forked tongue? It's crazy. They can make sounds that we are just lost on as they're speaking. Thankfully, again, they took into English quite easy. However, one of the main issues that we have was that the, uh, the ones that were there, they began to bond with us. And I mean emotionally bond. Don't get that confused. It was similar to when you take in a young puppy or a, a dog that, uh, you know, you take in, take care of after they've been treated poorly. They bond with us very, very well. 
And uh, I do have to say this. Most of my crew were welcome to that. And not for the reason you think. Most of us have been living for a long time and just haven't had time for a relationship. So it was nice to have one. Not to mention the standard human protection instinct that us males have just kicked in on the nth degree. But it kicked in also for one other reason. We found out their history, and their history was not very good. In fact, even for an old war horse like me, I did tear up a little. 